Hello everyone, I'm Dimitri with Hardware Canucks and USB gaming headsets have acquired a larger market share thanks to their all-in-one nature. You don't require a sound card to uh, power them. Everything is done through the USB dongle on the headset itself. And I'm happy to see Sennheiser expand their gaming portfolio with the PC373D. But at $250, it is one of the most expensive in the gaming headset category. So, should you buy one? Toshiba, now offering OCZ products that are awesome and affordable like the RD400, TR150 and VT180 that are backed by advanced warranty program, now stronger than ever under Toshiba. So this headset, like with their entire gaming series, follows with the same fantastic frame design that puts all other plastic headsets to shame. Nothing has changed from the Game 1, aside from the new color tone, but drivers and microphones are identical to the spec. Seriously, they figured out the balance between build quality, comfort, durability, and it all merges with this frame. Plus, let's not forget the volume dial on the right ear cup that is super convenient, although it doesn't fully mute the audio in the lowest position. The frame is size adjustable, it's flexible, it's relatively low profile when uh, when you have the headset on you, the drivers inside the ear cups are angled for better acoustics, and the velour padding is super comfortable, it's dense enough to uh, create a nice seal, plus it's very nice on your skin, this is by far the most comfortable headset that I have owned. The only thing that uh, you have to be mindful of is abundance of lint, hair and dust on the velour padding. The cable here is removable, which has an inline USB dongle, which then connects via micro USB to USB on your PC. Now, it's interesting how I can plug in the same cable to my Game 1 headset, which is analog, and have everything working just fine, and I do like this backwards compatibility. A quick word on the cable, it is not braided, it is slightly rubberized, and luckily does not translate uh, too much of the sound or noise coming from the cable when it's brushing against your shirt or something like that onto the headset itself. The USB dongle has a single button, the Dolby Surround button that illuminates when activated and given the length of the cable it is unpleasant having to reach all the way down to the cable just to press it but luckily we have full control in this little software window that is far more accessible. So in this window you can choose which EQ settings you want, noise reduction for the microphone and the side tone for the microphone so you can hear what you're saying and let's hear the mic test now. So when it comes to the microphone quality, I love that you can simply mute it by clicking it up with a distinct click. Um, this is a digital connection with a USB dongle, so there is no hiss. It's a very clean connection, but why is it so nasally? There's a little bit too much processing going on to make this maybe as clean as it can be, which is unfortunate because it doesn't sound as natural as the Game 1 headset, for example, that when connected to my motherboard sounds a lot better. Let's take a listen. And so this is the Game 1 headset, it's analog, connected directly to my motherboard via 3.5mm headphone and microphone jacks. Notice just how much more natural the microphone sounds. It's a little bit more boomy, it's not as nasally, there doesn't seem like there's a lot of compression going on at all. And uh, both microphones have um, no effects applied to them, this is just pure raw voice. Now coming back to the driver software, I find it too basic, especially at this price point and especially coming from Sennheiser. I was expecting to be a little bit more control, like giving us an EQ curve that we can adjust and play around with. Now I realize that Sennheiser is maybe trying to simplify things so that the users don't get overly complicated with trying to figure out what type of sound signature they prefer, but having those three presets is just limiting in my opinion. So like the music uh, completely destroys the treble, it brings it down so you lose the bright extension and then turns the bass into mud which is terrible for music. The eSports is fine, it brings up the vocals but crushes everything else so I guess that's a good one for a very specific purpose if you are trying to watch some eSports but the game preset is completely disappointing especially since that's this supposed to be the icing on the cake for this category. And so turning on game mode it just tames the sound in my opinion, it doesn't sound as full as if you were to have everything at off uh, and the default the sound signature is nice and bright treble is emphasized we have nice deep bass and forward mid range which uh, combined with an open acoustic design creates a fantastic sound stage and so for best acoustic performance i would recommend leaving the settings and eqs at its default state 
But Dmitri, Dmitri, the whole point of this headset is the USB dongle. So how is the Dolby surround sound? Well, it does what it promises to do. It's supposed to enlarge the audio environment. It pushes everything out. The sound stage is a little bit more, it's less uh, detailed, but it feels like audio elements are farther out. So for games like Battlefield 1, so in the game where the sound engine is fantastic, the 373D really picks up on all of these elements. The bass region is present when necessary so you feel the power of a grenade to get an enemy out of a trench. We've lost objective George. Or when blowing up dynamite trying to damage a tank. Objective Charlie. Oh. <laughs> And then the little elements like the sound of ears ringing or bullets flying overhead, you know, gave you, should give you a true sense of danger, which is thanks to this fantastic driver on this pair and also the sound engine in the game too. But for more sound-aware competitive play, I left the Dolby Surround off, since stereo presentation with an open design for me is perfect for positional awareness. So if you want to be accused of wall hacks, simply listen to the footsteps and you'll know exactly where they come from. And so all of that is great, but ultimately the PC373D is a disappointment to me. Simply because the built-in presets are not what I was expecting and just not have an EQ curve that we can adjust ourselves is a big head scratcher. The microphone is worse compared to the analog game one model. And while I was contempt with the maximum volume level, it is less powerful than the game one, which ultimately brings me to the conclusion. The game one and the PC373D are identical, except for the cable. The USB dongle here, in my opinion, is a missed opportunity to give more advanced controls for the user to create and fine-tune their sound signatures. It is definitely more convenient with the USB, simply plug and play and forget, but the Game 1 as an analog pair offers better value, unless you're gaming off a really old motherboard that has some poor audio or just gaming off a laptop that has also poor audio, then I would recommend sticking with an analog headset. I'm Dimitri with Howard Canucks. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next review.